In this video, we're going to work through the process of building and running a linear regression model in Excel. So linear regression, which is often referred to as regression analysis, is a form of predictive analytics used to estimate the relationship between two or more variables and then make predictions about future outcomes based on some historical data. In regression analysis, we refer to the variable that we're looking to predict as our dependent variable or our Y and the variables that we're using to produce those predictions as our independent variables or our X's. Now regression analysis is also considered by many to be a form of descriptive analytics because it can also provide us with insights into our historical data to identify things like trends and relationships between variables, such as maybe helping a company to identify which factors may be associated with the past sales of a given product. But it's important to note that the main purpose of regression analysis is not just to describe what happened in the past, but to estimate what may happen in the future. So let's go ahead and dive into an example using some data. So here I have just a little bit of data that represents the advertising expenditure that a company spent and the corresponding sales values that they realized during the time period they were spending that much money on advertising. And what we wanna do here is run a regression model to see if we can predict sales, so this is gonna be our Y, using this X value for advertising expenses. So, you know, we might be curious in saying, well, what if we spent $110,000 on advertising expenses? What would we anticipate sales would be? And is there a relationship here between these two things? So before we actually run a regression model, the first thing you wanna check is, is this data linear? Because it may not be linear, in which case we shouldn't use a linear regression model on it. So to check to see if this data is linear, we can do that just using a visual inspection. And so let's go ahead and select this range of data right here, including the labels. And I'm gonna go up here to the insert ribbon in Excel and click on recommended charts. And this first option right here is gonna be perfect for what we need to see. So we'll go ahead and click here on the scatter plot and hit okay. And so this is just plotting out the data. We can see that we have the advertising expenses on the X axis here and the corresponding sales on the Y axis. And if we wanted to adjust these axes to zoom in on the data a little, we can do that just by clicking here on one of the axes and go to format axis. And I'm just gonna go ahead and change the minimum bound here for my X axis. It looks like the data starts right around 20. So let's go ahead and change that to 20. And then we'll click here on the Y axis and change that minimum bound to, it looks like the data starts at 200. So we'll use 200. And so this is just zooming in on the data a little bit. And if we click here on any one of the data points and then right click, we can add a trend line. And this is just a straight line that's going through the data. And so you can see here that this data does look to be linear. And in fact, it's a positive linear trend up. Uh, this is, you know, as opposed to something like exponential where it would be like a curve um, or, or really any other kind of distribution of data we could have, this does appear to be linear. So it looks like this would be suitable for a linear regression model. So let's go ahead and jump into building out our regression model. So to do that, Excel has a built-in tool for running regressions that can be found on the data ribbon. And when you first go to the data tab here, the data ribbon tab, all the way to the right, you may or may not see the data analysis tool pack. So currently I'm not seeing it in my version of Excel. So I have to add it. And this is something that you just have to do once on your computer. Once you add the data analysis tool pack, it'll be there for future use. So if you're on a Windows machine to add this, we'll go over to file and then we'll go down to options. And then from Excel options, you'll see add-ins listed. Click on add-ins and at the bottom under manage Excel add-ins, click on this go button. And what you wanna do is go ahead and select the analysis tool pack and while you're in here, I'd recommend you go ahead and add solver because you may want to use that in the future. So we'll go ahead and click on that and hit okay. Once we have that added, you'll see the data analysis tool pack shows up here on the data ribbon. Now, if you're working on a Mac in Excel, the process is very similar. You just go up to the data ribbon and then all the way to the right, you should see a button for analysis tools. You can click on that and that will bring up the add-ins window. Alternatively, if you don't see the analysis tools button, if you go up to the tools menu, 
and go down to Excel add-ins. And then from here, just go ahead and select Analysis Tool Pack as well as the Solver add-in and hit OK. Now, once you've added these tools to your version of Excel, the process for running a regression is the same on the Mac version of Excel as it is on Windows. So let's go ahead and click here on the Data Analysis button. And that'll bring up our data analysis tool pack options. And you can see there's a lot of different tools. We want to go ahead and use regression. So let's click on that and hit OK. And then here is the dialog that we need to fill out, starting off with our input range for our Y values. So that in this case is sales. So let's go ahead and click here on this little button and select this range for sales, including the label. And then the same thing for our X's. If you had multiple X's, meaning multiple independent variables, you would select a range of columns. In this case, we only have one. So let's go ahead and just select this one right here. And then you're going to want to go ahead and check this little box here for labels, because we did select the labels for advertising expenses and sales. And that's going to make our regression output a little bit easier to interpret. The other options here, you can leave as default right here. So constant is zero is if we want our regression model to zero out the, the constant, the Y intercept value in the equation. Um, that's only relevant if we run the model once and determine that that intercept is not statistically significant, which we're going to go through that here in just a bit. And then our confidence level, you can leave at the default of 95%. But of course, if you wanted to adjust this for some other reason, maybe you wanted to use an alpha or a margin of error of 10%, you could change this to 90, but I recommend for all of our analysis here that you leave it at the default value of 95%. In terms of outputting your regression results, uh, you can select a new workbook, a new worksheet, or you can select a specific output range, which is what I typically do. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select output range and pick a cell on this worksheet. And then you can leave all this stuff down here unchecked and hit okay and this will produce our regression output. So let me go ahead and switch to this other worksheet so we can review this in detail with a little bit more information. So starting at the top here with our regression statistics, the first one we have here is our multiple R, which is the correlation coefficient, which indicates the strength and direction of our linear relationship. So we can see here that advertising and sales are correlated at roughly 92%, and because it's a positive number, it is a positive correlation. Now. You could actually get this number using another tool if you wanted to. If you go up to the data analysis tool pack, there is a correlation matrix tool that will take a data set uh, and, and look at the correlations between each one of the fields, each one of the variables. This is going to be relevant when you're dealing with multiple independent variables because we're going to need to check for what's called multicollinearity to make sure that none of our independent variables are too strongly correlated to one another because that can actually disrupt our model in terms of its usefulness and how we interpret it. But in this case, we just have one independent variable, one dependent variable. If we wanted to check their correlation, we could use this tool to do it by just selecting correlation. And then here under input range, I would select all of this data. And I would tell the tool that I've grouped them by columns and then I selected the labels. And then just like with the regression output, I can select a particular range where I want to output this matrix. And you'll see here, it, all it does is just calculate the correlation coefficients between these different things. So naturally, advertising expense is 100% correlated with advertising expense, and sales is 100% correlated with itself as well. But you can see here, the correlation between advertising expense and sales is 92%. And this number is the exact same number here as our multiple R. So that's where that number comes from, if you're curious. Next, we have our R squared, which is the proportion of variability in our dependent variable that is explained by our independent variables in this regression model. The adjusted R squared is the same value, but adjusted for the number of predictors in the model. So basically, if we just kept adding a bunch of independent variables, you know, predictors essentially to our model, this number may get reduced, may get penalized if we add variables that don't actually improve the explanatory power of the model. But these are the two key numbers that you want to focus on in a regression because this tells you basically how much of the change in our, in our dependent variable can be explained 
by our independent variable. So basically how powerful or useful is this model? Then we have the standard error. This is not something you're ever gonna have to calculate manually. This is provided to us by the regression output. And so if you're curious in how it's calculated, you can go back and review those calculations. And then we have here our observations, which is telling us how many data points do we have in this particular model, which is 10. Moving down to our ANOVA output here, the most important value down here that you want to look at is this significance F. And so significance F is the p-value of the regression model as a whole. And it basically indicates whether the model is statistically significant in explaining the variability in the de dependent variable. Basically, is the model useful? And here's the test. If this value is less than 5%, because we selected a 95% confidence level, and 5% is our margin and error there, that's our alpha value, if it's less than our margin of error, then we say the model is statistically significant. There is something useful here in this model. So really, before you even look at the R squared, you can check this F value here, the significance F to see, is it less than 5%? Because if it's not less than 5%, if it's greater than 5%, the whole model's just, just throw it out. It's not useful to us. Um, so this really is the first check. And then looking at our R squared values, it gives us an idea of how much explanatory power the model has once we determine that it is statistically significant. Then down here, we have all of the values associated with our coefficients for our equation. Now this equation here is determined by these coefficients and it is the equation of this line that we previously plotted on the chart. In fact, you can actually click here on the chart and when you go to format trend line, you have the option here to display the equation on the chart. And so this is the equation you would get by taking these variables and running a regression with it. So you can see here that these coefficient values here match our equation of that line. So the equation is y equals 3.017 x plus 148.82. And so 3.017 is the coefficient for our advertising expense, and then 148 is our constant in the equation. Now, before we actually use this equation to make some estimations, we wanna do one more check, and that's we wanna look at our p-values here. And so these are the p-values for each one of our variables. Our, our intercept and our independent variable. And we need to make sure that these are also below that 5% threshold. So you can see these are very small numbers. They are less than 5%. And so those are statistically significant to our model and we'll want to use them. You can also take a glance here at this lower and upper 95%. And basically this is showing you the possible ranges of that coefficient value. And basically if this p-value is greater than 5%, then this range, it's probably gonna have zero in the range, meaning that the coefficient value could possibly be zero, which means that if the coefficient is zero, then the variable is statistically insignificant to our model. So that's another good check to take a look here. You can see that the range of possible values for intercept within that margin of error is between 84 and 214 or 213. And then for advertising expense, it's between 1.97 and 4.05. So again, zero is not in either one of those ranges. So we know that both of these are useful to the model. So to wrap this all up, if we wanted to actually make some predictions using this equation, we just need to plug in a value for advertising expenses. So over these past 10 periods that we have for data, we spent between 30 and 90 thousand dollars on advertising let's see what we would anticipate or estimate sales to be if we spent more than 90 so let's use hundred and ten thousand dollars so to actually use the equation let's just go ahead and type it into excel so we can use these coefficient values here so we'll start off here with our coefficient for advertising so we'll say 3.01 so just reference that and we're going to multiply that by 110 since these numbers were already represented in thousands, we don't have to type in the full number, just 110. And then plus our constant, which is 148.A1 for our intercept. And when we hit enter, we'll see here that our estimated sales is 480,000. Again, because these numbers are in thousands. So that makes sense, right? You can see here that this number is larger 
than this number here, which makes sense. If you spend more money on advertising, you would anticipate they would make more money in terms of sales.